Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is a Terrible Game Show. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is a Terrible Game. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire is a Terrible Show. It's a terrible game show because it's overly dramatized plotting crap that ends up sometimes taking entire episodes just to answer three questions. The tension is purely manufactured, and the production doesn't match its actual content of run-of-the-mill multiple-choice trivia, and never is there any contestant on the show who can be outlandish enough to leave an impression like that guy who answers penis for the 400th time on Family Feud, or enough spectacle and energy to feel excited to be chosen to play like The Price is Right, the best game show ever made. It's a terrible game because it's just trivia, with no twist whatsoever on the formula except lifelines, which are just hints disguised as plot points. Even back when the show premiered in 1999, you could find this shit on the internet for free, or buy some far superior trivia CD-ROM game like the original You Don't Know Jack collection. It's a terrible show because it becomes forgettable as soon as you watch one episode. While it hypes itself up as an intense, movie-budgeted affair, it's really just a hollow nothing pile as trite as most reality shows. Jeopardy may be a show of similar substance, consisting of absolutely nothing but answering questions, wagering money, dying of pancreatic cancer, and desperately struggling to find a suitable replacement host, even though you never will, but Jeopardy rattles off the trivia and keeps the intrigue flowing, while millionaires' god-awful pacing and usually Neanderthal-level questions result in a frustrated and uncaptivated audience. But sometimes, someone aims to change this. Sometimes, someone steps onto the millionaire stage with the intent of not giving a flying fuck about all who oppose him. Alan Carver is that someone. Now see, this is where other YouTube videos would have gone into the boring as fuck history of who wants to be a millionaire or giving you more background info on Alan Carver because they aren't creative enough to find entertaining ways to increase the runtime of their videos so they can generate more ad revenue and instead, let's just get right into it. Alan Carver was a contestant on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire at some point, and I love how he handled the game, and I'm going to talk about it at the end. There's some pretty wonky network logo censoring and aspect ratioing on this clip because it's the only surviving one I could find on the internet. All other recordings of this episode seem to have been obliterated by copyright claims. Even worse, I think some other uploader added a couple of text overlays and censored the name of the original uploader on this one to pathetically try to grab the attention of people on Facebook or other normies and used a little, like, funny introductory giggle joke to try to convince them to watch the rest of the episode and... Fuck me. <laughs> We're just knee-deep in the era of entertainment doesn't have to be good, it just has to grab your attention, aren't we? Although, I did some research, and it seems the original uploader of this clip watermarked his own channel name onto it, which... You can't do that. You don't own Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, nor is this video transformative in any way. It's literally just an upload of an episode of the show. Look, I'll cut you guys some slack because this went up all the way back in 2009 before the silly copyright dance was a thing. But my point is with all of this, I'm not altering any of the video you're about to see in unscrupulous ways. What you're seeing is the re-upload that I was able to download, blur censorship included and all. I haven't changed anything. Let's get started. Yes, it's my birthday, my 47th birthday. I'm gonna win a million dollars on my birthday. What'd you say? I'm going to win a million dollars on my birthday. Wow. You know what, Al? You, you say that like you, you're not even kidding around. You're looking I'm at me right- I'm going to win a million okay. dollars on my birthday. Do you have a problem with that? No. Right off the bat, right off the fucking bat, establish dominance. This guy gets it. He's confident. He knows what he wants. And he is not gonna let the namby-pamby introductory small talk throw him off his game. The host of Millionaire at this time was Meredith Vieira, and Alan can smell the bullshit stink coming off of her immediately. He knows Meredith doesn't give a flying shit about him. She just wants to hammer through her four tapings of this show a day, go home to her Great Dane, and smear peanut butter on her vagina like her name is Velma Dinkley. You have work security, right? For the Star Trek Inter galactic security team. I, I did some stuff with the Klingon diplomatic corps. We oh. were a small group of, of fans of Star Trek who did security at conventions. We're the Klingon diplomatic corps. We don't have to be diplomatic. <laughs> Jesus fucking shit. 
There is probably nary a star cluster in the Triangulum Galaxy where Alan here has an absolutely pummeled alien pussy into perfect submission. If you look at this guy and your pathetic normie brain's first instinct is to insult his weight, appearance, or nerdy hobbies instead of respecting his no-nonsense bulldozer passion for life, then you and I can never be friends because you're too basic to live. Fifteen seconds on the clock. This is for 100 bucks. Shake, shake, shake. According to Emily Post at the movies, you should turn which of these items to vibrate? Laptop, computer? Cell phone, final answer. Yes, that's it. Cell phone is it, okay? And already, Alan has won my respect and a bronze statue in his honor in my front lawn. The first or five so questions on millionaire are gimmies. Easy thrown out things there just to make sure you're paying attention. This man not only had the iron will to refrain from saying the answer of dildo to what you would turn to vibrate in a movie theater, but he wasn't even here to play games. He was here to win money. This man went on a game show and said he's not here to play games. He's here to win money. Dedicated in 1984, Arizona State University's Cronkite School focuses on what professional field? Fashion design? Journalism, final answer. You got it right. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, Meredith. Shut the fuck up, Meredith. Shut the fuck up, Meredith. You think you can stop the Allen Rich? Cause he's gonna tighten the competition's nuts no matter the size. Let's play house. Not you and me, I'm just a category for 300. Which I know your wife's up there. Which of these household objects is commonly used as a musical instrument in folk and country music? Umbrella stand, washboard. washboard final answer. Okay, Alan, you got it. Alan is such a power block bulk of a man that Meredith even tries hitting on him, but retracts her statement when she remembers that Alan is a married man and would never cheat on his wife. In 2009, a retractable roof was added to center court to prevent rain delays at what prestigious sporting event? Wimbledon. Wimbledon, final answer. I'm a man on fire. You are. <laughs> you are hot. Yes. Meredith, you were just reminded of your chastity and Alan's lifelong devotion to his spouse. Go get some Kleenex, wipe that mess off you got in your pants while I address Alan's masterful delivery. I'm a man on fire. He's hot and he knows it. He doesn't even have to be excited about this fact. To someone else, this would be a boast of abilities, but to Alan, this is the truth. It is dyslexia. I mean, Alan's going for $2,000. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Let's just analyze this scene a little bit here, shall we? Number one. Every single bone in Meredith's fingers are now shattered. Number two, Alan's voice has such power and authority behind it that not only can you hear his declaration that he wins a million dollars today over the eardrum rupturing music, but any lab currently inserting a Zen crystal into an anti-mass spectrometer has just experienced a resonance cascade thanks to Alan's vocal seismic activity. And number three, who Wants to Be a Millionaire is a show that would often film in parts if certain contestants ran long, but Alan is making it very clear that Alan's gonna be earning a seven-figure cash prize in just one show, no more. Only Alan could do this, because earning a million dollars for just one show is something akin to famous magicians, talentless but popular rock bands, and any woman who ever signs up for OnlyFans. Lori, Lori is Alan's wife, lovely Lori in the audience. Yeah. What do you think? Is she going to do it? We're, we're here to take your money. Oh, okay, you're here to take the money, then I should just shut up, right, and let you play. Alan has either chosen the most powerful woman in history to be his queen, or Alan's success is contagious enough to anyone who sticks around him long enough. Either way, when they have children, they will create the most powerful bloodline since Genghis Khan. Ready? Ready. Okay, let's play. Thirty seconds. 
seconds on that clock, Alan, for $2,000. Ooh, now we're getting serious. The clock ramps up to 30 seconds. The dramatic music stings. The lights shift to heighten the tension. Maybe Alan will finally start to sweat. The site of an infamous World War II battle, Okinawa is a prefecture governed by what nation? Japan, Japan South Korea. Final answer. Now you're getting on my nerves. Yes, you got it right. <laughs> and he knocks it the fuck out of the park. Alan, did you write these questions? No, but there are other people waiting to play the game, and I want to give them a chance. Oh, well. You're so generous. You are so generous. And he's kind. Alan has a love for his fellow man and a hatred of overly produced daytime TV dribble. He's a man of many talents. What variety of fruit is sometimes referred to as an Algerian tangerine after where some believe it was discovered? Clementine, guava, avocado, papaya. Alan? Alan, Alan, answer the question. I have to ask the audience. Oh, in shock, audience, Alan needs your help. Even a god can have his flaws. Just look at Kanye West. After swatting down eight questions like a SWAT team during a meth lab raid, Alan decides to give back to the viewing audience and pretends to not know the answers so that the live audience can vote on it. Want to know how I know he was pretending? Okay, 71% believe it is Clementine. You have 21 seconds, Alan, starting now. Clementine, final answer. It is Clementine. You got it right. See, if he wasn't sure, he wouldn't have hesitated there. No one would ever blindly put their faith into a group of strangers, because people are fucking morons who only get stupider as their numbers increase. Alan called back on his natural, charitable instincts from earlier by joining the spectators in on the fun, while the fabric was beginning to fray on Meredith's blue jacket from how hard her nipples involuntarily became at this sight of unchecked masculinity. That, yeah, I'm like, hey, hey, hey. Don't Google this episode. Do not look it up on the internet. Because I don't think you could bear such an autopsy report. The body count was unrivaled and every victim found in pieces when it came to the rampage Alan probably went on in the studio when they boldly told him he wasn't going to have a chance to win a million dollars in one show as he had already proclaimed from his testosterone throne. The river of blood still flows out of the millionaire set to this day and yet Alan is unfazed. Meet Alan Carver. He's smart, he's confident, he's about to go for $25,000. Anything you want to add, Alan? I'm going to win a million dollars on who wants to be a millionaire. Oh! Oh, fuck! Oh! Alan, I'm sorry. Okay, so it's day two, and the audience has somehow survived Alan's wrath. He switched from a fiery red shirt of passion to a calming blue shirt of reflection and balanced budgets. Alan has finally mellowed out a bit. He's only got six questions left, and he's gonna focus up and get the job done. Right? What makes you so sure? Well, I know everything. Oh. And I'm going to win a million dollars. You know everything. I know, I'm, I'm Bracken. I know everything. Okay, fuck. Never mind. Then I don't want to stand in your way because I'm the only thing separating you, like, apparently, from this Capital One check for one million dollars. That's the name of the game. Actually, it's, it's me and, and six little old questions, but you do have three lifelines waiting on that board for you when you need them and your expert today a regular on the oprah winfrey show writer and actress ali wentworth is there when you need her <laughs> yeah okay alan's gonna need help from little miss ali wentworth she was only in one episode of seinfeld while jason alexander who plays george costanza was in 171 and if you're not at least as good as jason alexander then I don't want a goddamn thing from you. So, Alan, I'm going to win a million dollars, Carver. Are you ready? Uh, no, let's wait half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Audience, are you ready? Yeah! Let's play millionaire. All right, Alan, 30 seconds on the clock. This is for $25,000. In 2009, Chicago's famed Sears Tower officially changed its name to what? Weston the Willis Tower. Tower, final answer. I know this. 
Sure it is. It's the Willis Tower. I love the palpable excitement here. Alan is backing each and every one of his claims up. He's taking after world leaders who all accomplished great things. When Alexander the Great said he'd conquer the world, he did it in just 13 years. When Teddy Roosevelt announced he would unify the Americas, he plowed a canal through Panama with or without consent from the indigenous people. And when I stand here before you today saying I have the world's largest penis, I know at least a hundred of you out there are going to start editing Wikipedia articles and contacting Guinness World Records because history books need to be rewritten. This is the first time since you joined the show I've seen real emotion. Look at the, you're, and I'm not, I'm not even saying that teasing you. You're getting very emotional. Tell me what's going on. Oh, Alan, come here, sweetie. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. The $25,000 question on the syndicated show has seemed to be significantly harder than the previous questions. And, and this was not the strain I thought it would be. So you got some relief now, right? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna win a medal. Alan, 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 Alan! Practice time is the category. 45 seconds now on the clock, meaning questions a little harder. By definition, someone who is skirling is playing what musical instrument? Cowbell, bagpipes. Bagpipes, final answer. I'm not going to mess with you because you're an emotional guy. You have $15,000. What's there even to say? It's done. Wrap it up. Give him his egregiously sponsored check for a million dollars and let's move on to the next contestant who's probably a mom of three Pomeranians from Idaho or some shit. Author Henry James famously remarked that the two most beautiful words in the English language are what? Summer afternoon, outdoor cafe, complete silence, babbling brook. Let's ask the expert, please. All right, we're going to bring in our expert at this moment. Let's get Allie Wentworth here. <sighs> okay. Okay, we're not going to panic. Notice how quickly he decided to ask the expert. That just means he wants to double check his answer. If he wasn't sure, he would have mulled over the question a little bit of, hmm, a little bit of, huh, action. You know, a little bit of the old chin scratch. But no, as soon as that barely revived skin suit named Meredith Vieira was done talking, Alan broke her bones with a small gust of wind by firmly blowing air out of his lungs to proclaim it's time for a lifeline, bitch. Nice to see you, Allie. Hi, nice to see you. I'm going to feed you the question right now. <laughs> wow. I, um, believe it or not, I'm literate, but, uh, <laughs> I'm going to completely guess and say complete silence. But that's a guess. That was, that, that was my that thinking was my as well. Wow, we should have dated way back when. <laughs> well, I'm considerably older than you are. So. All right, you oh, two. Well, his wife's here. We're going to move on, Allie, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Allie, very much. Allie, you have 38 seconds Complete left. Complete silence, but... final answer. It's not. Oh, I'm sorry. It is not. It was summer afternoon. Expert. Expert. She's an expert. I don't know. Back in my day, expert used to mean something. She's an expert and she had to take a complete guess the only thing Allie fucking Wentworth is an expert of is swallowing rocks so she has an easier time sinking to the bottom of the gene pool Allie is such an expert they did the call on Skype 
Meaning she was at home on her computer. I guess Google is blocked on Allie's little private home network, huh? Maybe she's too paranoid about stalkers downloading candid photos of that one time she was on Seinfeld from her 15 seconds of fame folder on her hard drive. So she might not trust Google. That's okay, Allie. There's Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Baidu, Yandex, S.com, AOL Search, Brave. Hell, even just look up a fucking YouTube tutorial for Henry James' two beautiful English words. Expert! Jesus! Alan should have been the expert lifeline, and Allie should have been found in a dumpster a few hours before recording this episode. I'm mad. I am mad! This episode was recorded all the way back in 2009, and I'm fucking mad. <laughs> but, in the wise words of our Lord and Savior and household dominator, Alan, it was my decision to answer. I knew that she wasn't sure, and I should have taken it into consideration. Not only did Alan do a low-key AMA on Reddit a few years after re-uploads of this episode went viral, but I also found his Twitter. And the man's more saintly than you'd think. He has a strong faith in God, plays and uploads Wordle scores, meaning he's not afraid to follow trends even if they're boring pieces of shit, and with his $25,000 winnings, he was able to buy a couple computers, some stereos, a TV, a TiVo, some clothes, and pay off $11,000 in debt. Which is the most impressive one of all, because that's something no college student watching this video will ever be able to do. I'll link the Reddit AMA and his Twitter in the description, because if I don't, this video would just be me reacting and reciting Reddit threads and Twitter garbage, and I'm not that much of a talentless soulless view chaser yet. I, I'm sorry if TikTok and other 30 minute cut and paste text to speech slop jobs have spoiled you guys so much in terms of never having to actually read anything again, but I got like video games to play and stuff, you know, I'm busy. Anyway, the video's over now. Alan, if you're watching this, please adopt me. We're the Klingon Diplomatic Corps. We don't have to be diplomatic. I'm going to win a million dollars on who wants to be a millionaire. Please silence, Let's final answer. It's not. Oh, I'm sorry, it is not. It was summer afternoon. 